Let's now look into the generation of an LM hash. An LM hash is, strictly speaking, not a hash, since it uses a DES algorithm and not a cryptographic hash function. Why was Microsoft so stubbornly using weak cryptographic algorithms in the past? The answer is politics. The export of strong cryptography used to be restricted in the US. Windows NT administrators might remember a special patch that allowed them to make use of 56-bit keys instead of 40-bit keys. The patch was only released once the embargo was lifted. Microsoft was unable to export strong cryptographic protocols as the American government considered this a threat. As you might imagine, European software producers strongly supported the ban. Let's return to the LM hash. Assume a user's password is the string Seattle1. The protocol converts the string into uppercase. In earlier versions of Windows, such as XP, user passwords aren't case sensitive. Uppercase and lowercase letters can be used interchangeably since the string will be converted anyway. The system doesn't recognize the case of letters used in the password. The second drawback is that the protocol restricted allowable characters to alphanumeric only. After a string was converted to capital letters, the password was divided into two parts. The first seven characters were the first part of the password. The other seven are the second part. The password has two ideal halves. In order to make the two parts equal, passwords were padded with spaces to 14 characters. If you use LM, they are still padded in this way. This has interesting implications and we'll come back to this later. One of the consequences to this solution was that an 8 character password is more vulnerable than a password that has 7 characters. The 8th character meant that a part of the password was made up from one character and nulls. This was a fixed string, so even from the DES ciphertext you could deduce what was there. The character could also hint to what was contained in the first part. If the character was the last digit of a birth date, you could assume that the earlier characters were the preceding digits. We already have the two seven character parts. Now each part is separately encrypted with the DES algorithm using a fixed key, a literal. The output of the encryptions is then joined using an ordinary concatenation. The result is a LAN manager password. As we've seen, a LAN manager password is not 14 characters long. It's split into two 7 character passwords, since both parts of the password can be cracked separately. The number of operations needed to crack it is lowered again. It's enough to perform about 10 to the 12th power operations to check all LM Manager passwords. For modern machines, 10 to the 12th power is not a large number. A password can be cracked in a matter of seconds. NTLAN Manager is a protocol that employs solutions that are both simpler and less vulnerable. Above all, it opts for a hash function instead of the DES. Because of the restrictions and the embargo we mentioned, the hash function is not very secure. It's Message Digest version 4. It's not a serious problem, however, as nobody will try to generate a password that will have a hash identical to yours. This attack would not make any sense. What's the difference between NT and LAN Manager passwords? First, the NT passwords are case sensitive. They also allow you to use a password that is longer than 14 characters. 
An implication that is worth noting is that if you work on a system that uses LAN Manager, for example on Windows XP with the default configurations kept, you should provide the 15 character password or longer. A LAN Manager hash can't be generated from this password, and so Windows will not generate the hash. You'll be a lot more secure than anybody else. For NTLM, the maximum password length is 127 characters. What does this mean? The simple fact that passwords aren't broken in half and letters aren't converted to uppercase means that an alphanumeric only password, like the passwords used in LAN Manager, requires 10 to the 25th power operations to brute force it. This provides a lot more security. If you use a 14 character password with special characters, a brute force attack would take 10 to the 67th power operations. And if you insisted on using up all the password space provided, 127 characters, cracking the password using a brute force attack would require 10 to the 611th operations. NT and NTLM passwords are deterministic. It's similar with Linux and Unix systems. Determinism means that the same hash must always be generated from the same password. There's no seed in it that would create pseudo-randomness. LAN Manager was used up to the release of Windows Vista. The protocols that replace it give us a lot more security. If you still use Windows XP, at least select a different protocol than LAN Manager. Thank you.